Hey guys, Capper here. Welcome back. Today is January 18th, 2019. And today I'm going to knock out the antenna tower. It, it will be just about ready for antennas. So let's get right into it and not waste any more time. Roll, baby. Okay, so my next step in here after uh, doing just a little more reading, particularly on the towers, um, I'm not sure how high I'm going to go yet, but I am going to add some support here. So what I've got here is probably an inch and uh, three eighths maybe or inch and a quarter. It's too big to fit inside of the plumbing pipe. And by the way, I also did some checking on the plumbing pipe. That is every bit as strong as other rolled steel pipe. It's rolled and it's heavier, so... Logic dictates that that is much stronger than that pipe. This is probably the pipe I should have used, but here's the problem. This is a really nice heavy gauge that I had left over from our lake dock project. But when I went to Menards, they didn't have this. All they had at Menards was a 17 gauge, which was about half of the thickness as this particular piece right here. So I'm going to fabricate this up, weld it. Get it seated down here, and right now this goes in basically up to this bolt keeper, which is the end of that plumbing pipe. So I'm also going to have to secure it here, so I'll weld it right here, weld it at the bottom, and then what that's going to do is that if, if this wants to break off, um, this is all one, one individual piece of pipe. So with this base holding it, it's going to have to really shear this thing in half in order for that to break off at this particular union. So let me get to work. I'm not going to do a ton of filming. I really want to try and get some stuff done here, but I'll uh, check back in. Look at that, just about there. This will snap right off. There should be plenty to sink a few welds on it. Let's roll. Okay, so I had to cut a 45 with the Sawzall because this is just a smidge uh, too wide for the chop saw. Okay, I'm basically trying to mirror this side, this 45, or at least close to it. Nobody's going to see it 50 feet in the air. So I got my corner cut with the Sawzall, and I'm going to finish this triangle cut here with the chop saw. I got a hole in one man check this out good thing it was going the opposite way so that that little uh, scrap piece kicked out and I got a hole in one down there into the plumbing pit oh neat look at that sucker standing right up well, future note to self there don't have anybody standing in front of it when you're cutting a short piece that's going to be left. Look at that. We learned something new today. Okay, I got my piece kind of in place here. I was debating on, you know, do I want to tack weld in, in a couple of these corners? You know, would it affect the uh, structural integrity? And then I started looking. I'm like, you know, this whole thing is welded. Every joint is welded on this entire tower. So a couple of tack welds are not going to hurt it. And look at this. 
one of these is off. I mean, who knows how many years that's been off. I mean, I haven't done anything with the top that would have broken that. And you see there's a big old gouge there that somebody taped over many, many years ago. This ain't fresh. Um, so I'm going to retack this and just keep my fingers crossed with that. All right, the first welds just to uh, secure that base plate down. And uh, it may not seem like it, but... This disaster in this shop, it really does eat me up when I'm out in it. It really does, because I am an organized person, usually. Um, just too much, there's too many marbles in the damn bag. That's all there is to it, right now anyways. Okay, here's where we're at. Uh, the welding is just about done. Um, I got it all wrapped up down there, tied in very nicely. I got a little ticked off here on that spot and I went and got a piece of rebar and put that on so that one is reconnected. And uh, took me a while to figure out getting the welds right, how to get the, uh, to keep from just burning the, um, the thinner galvanized. You could see there where I was burning it so I switched rods and power and so I ended up basically lingering and penetrating on the heavier pipe and then just kind of swimming it over to basically just touching that thin galvanized pipe because otherwise that melts really easy. So I'm just going to do a 360, um, add maybe one or two more welds and then continue on the project. All right, this might be it for today. Not sure how much longer I'm gonna be able to work, but really good progress. So basically I just hit only the areas that had welds or bare metal on them with some Rust-Oleum. And uh, it's not a beauty contest. This will be 50 feet in the air. Although I will be able to fly up with my drone and uh, really inspect this thing. So I'll have my own drone inspection team. The only, the really the only possible thing that I have any remote concern about is this galvanized pipe right here. Uh, because that inch and a half was so snug in there, the only threat that I think there is is if this would split. Um, obviously it hasn't yet, I don't think it will. Um, but that is why I tied this in down here, that in down there, some welds in up here. So even if it did split, there is some other things holding it up. Okay, since we're talking about weight on my ham radio tower, let's get some facts out there for our discussion. Okay, that's a three foot pipe, um, the plumbing pipe that I'm using, it's eight pounds. For a three foot section. Now I'm going to try and get uh, the, the pipe, the galvanized that I think it calls for and let's weigh the difference. Okay so a four foot section of uh, what I'm going to guess is 16 or 15 gauge inch and a half. I think that's probably what it calls for. I think it's inch and three eighths or inch and a quarter. So it's seven pounds, so we gotta do a little math. Let's get an apple to apple first. We gotta knock off one foot there and calculate what the difference is on a three foot section. So a three foot section is five and a quarter compared to eight. So for each three foot section, we're adding two and three quarter pounds, all right, compared to the stock. So let's go count up what we've got so far. A three foot, a three foot, 
a two foot and a two foot and one more section either two or three up here so 2.75 2.75 we're gonna just round these two footers and let's just say they add two pounds. So two, two, so we got, let's just round them up. Three pounds, six pounds, seven, eight, nine, ten. If we do another one, 11, 12, 13. So you add the, the joints in there, let's say another three pounds, so that's 16, 17, so we're really adding less than 20 pounds by doing it with this heavier pipe as opposed to what they call for. So if you keep that in mind, if you were to add a huge beam antenna, you know, compared to just a straight up dipole, um, you're gonna add probably 10 pounds, I'm gonna say there, just from antenna differences. So. I'm basically adding no more than 20 pounds max to this self-supported antenna. So if a person can climb all the way up this thing without guy wires on it, which is what it's made to do, it's self-supported, um, then I'm pretty sure it should handle the extra 20 pounds. Okay, getting closer now, the top piece there. I'm only gonna put a two footer on there and I don't have a two footer with threads on both sides so I cut one down so there's threads on the bottom that are going to thread in um, to that union there and I'm just going to weld this cap this was the cap I was pounding with so I'm just going to tack weld this on there because I don't want rain getting down into the pipe there uh, I have a cap for all three of them so these two here when I finish there they're going to have caps as well all right, I got two welds like that, one on each side. That will definitely suffice. I'll let it cool off and uh, hit it with some paint here in a little bit. There we go. Now we have successfully fabricated a rain lid. So now I'm taking a three footer with a thread on each side and I'm gonna cut it in half. And those are gonna be the uprights for the two outer antennas. Okay, so these two side antennas here, I got them tight. Okay, however, visualize an antenna on here right now and the wind is coming sideways. It is possible that it could slowly, you know, tighten or loosen them and take that out of position. So I'm gonna throw a tack weld on each of them just to eliminate that before it ever happens. Okay, so my rain lid had a little too much slag in the middle there, so I made a gutter, just like you would in a ditch. Um, so if it's almost close to level, you see my gutter there, the water should run off of it. Okay, so now nothing to do with stability, but everything to do with a good antenna mount is uh, I gotta cut these lengths of PVC and fit them right about here up to these welds because you don't want to mount your antenna on metal so you need an insulator so I just happen to have a saw that's a little overkill but it's gonna cut it Josh I don't know what you started here man but now I'm just gonna be looking for stuff to cut Okay, home stretch here, another uh, success with my welder. I got a long extension cord so that I could weld out in this bay, and it is paying me back.
All right, and I am done for the day. I'm toast, but we are just about ready for antennas. I know it don't look pretty, but I'm on a timeline here. I have my next surgery is in three weeks. So now, hopefully, you guys can better see what I was trying to do. I mean, these these sections are balanced. They're all exactly the same on each side. And the little two meter antenna that's gonna go on this one is probably ounces, probably not even pounds. Um, I hit all the welds with uh, some Rust-Oleum. And I'm gonna tell you, she's ready to go. Um, the only thing I have to do is I have to set some set screws in these because you don't want these uh, PVC insulators um, wiggling around. So some set screws and might actually break out the old uh, gorilla tape there because it, as you could see it, they could possibly touch that steel cap possibly so I mean this is one of the antennas right here here's the base I believe it's 14 or 15 inches you know so I built everything accordingly I can't slide it up any farther right now but can see um, this one's actually going to go on the top there on that big white one so uh, man stay tuned this stuff is exciting I'm hoping there's still a lot of work to do but I'm hoping to get this antenna tower up and in place before my surgery so I can do some radio action while I'm down so stay tuned